Good morning friends I hope everyone is doing well I request everyone to watch my videos in a sequence for better understanding In the last few videos we have discussed what is a data hazard and what are the types of data hazards The types of data hazards are read after write data hazard and then write after read data hazard and we have write after write data hazard in the last video we have discussed a, a technique called operand forwarding we have discussed a technique called operand forwarding which will eliminate the read after write data hazard however it does not eliminates these two other hazards one is write after read and write after write so in this video we will discuss a technique called register renaming which will eliminate the problem such as write after read and write after write data hazards so in this video we will just give an overview of write after read and write after write hazards in the already previous video i have different i have discussed about this write after read and write after write hazards in detail if you does not watch that video please watch that video and come back to this video for better understanding anyway i will just give a overview what is a write after read hazard write after read data hazard in shortcut we will write it as war now let's take that you have two instructions instruction 1 is some r3 is equal to r1 plus r2 and the instruction 2 is r2 is equal to 10 you are loading the value of 10 into the r2 register now let's take that r1 is initially is having value 1 r2 is having the value as 2 if you execute the instruction 1 first what will happen r3 is equal to r1 plus r2 which is 3 so r3 value you will get 3 and then if you execute the instruction 2 r2 value will be updated to 10 this is okay so you will have the 1 10 3 respectively in the register r1 register r2 and register r3 okay now if i execute the instruction 2 first because of instruction reshuffling if you shuffle the instruction 2 first and then you execute the instruction 1 then what will happen now r1 is 1 and r2 is 2 but if you execute the instruction 2 first r2 value will be updated to 10 then if you execute the instruction 3 instruction 1 then instruction 1 it is saying what r3 is equal to r1 plus r2 1 plus 10 it will be become 11 so if you execute the instruction 1 and instruction 2 you are getting 1 10 3 <laughs> if you are executing instruction 2 then instruction 1 then you are getting the values 1 10 and 11 so there is a data inconsistency is it clear are you able to understand so this one we will call it as a write after read hazard okay then we have another problem called write after write data hazard okay we have another problem called write after write data hazard let's take that i have instruction 1 which is r1 is equal to r2 plus r3 then i have instruction 2 r1 is equal to some r4 into r5 what is the problem with this one we will discuss let's take that initially r2 is valuing 2 and r3 is having the value 3 r4 is having the value 4 r5 is having the value some 5 Let's take that I am executing the instruction one first. What is the instruction one? It is saying R one is equal to R two plus R three. What is the R two plus R three? Two plus three. So R one you will get the value as five. Then if you execute the instruction two, then R one is equal to R four into R five. So four into five twenty. So you will remove the five and you will replace with twenty. Are you able to understand? however let's take that if you execute the instruction 1 and instruction 2 r1 value will be 20 let's take that you have executed the instruction 2 first r1 is equal to r4 into r5 so 
R1 will have the value 20. Then if you execute the instruction 1, R1 is equal to R2 plus R3. 2 plus 3, it will be 5. So, 5 will be replaced, sorry, 20 you will remove and you will insert the value 5 here. So, are you able to understand it or not? So, if you execute the instruction 1 and instruction 2, you will get the final R1 as 20. However, if you execute instruction 2, then instruction 1, you are getting the R1 value as 5. So, there is a data inconsistency. Now, you can ask me, sir, if I execute the instructions in sequence, first I will execute the instruction 1 and then instruction 2. But why, what is the chance of instruction 2 and instruction 2? Because of some uh, reshuffling to increase the pipeline performance. So, then if you execute the instruction 2 and instruction 1, then there is an inconsistency problem. So, this one we will call it as a write after write because you are updating the value here and also updating the value here. Here also you are performing the write operation. Here also you are performing the write operation. So, that is why it is called as write after write data hazard. If I same concept, if I discuss in DBMS, that problem we will call it as a lost update problem. Okay. So, now what is the solution for these two problems? We have a solution called or a technique called register renaming. It replaces the architectural names, architectural register names. Architectural register names with new names for every instruction destination operand. Are you able to understand? Let me repeat again. It replaces the architectural register names with new names for every instruction destination operand. Now, if you see that any instruction, we will have three parts. One is instruction mode, op code, and then we have operands. Am I right? An instruction consists of these three parts. Instruction mode, op code, and operand. What is the use of instruction mode? It will tell which addressing mode you have to use. And then opcode will tell what operation I want to perform. And what is the use of operand on which operands I want to perform the operation. Now, if you see the operands, we have two types of operands. One is source operand. And then we have destination operand. Now, let us take that. What is the source operand and what is the destination operand? Let us take that I have add R1, R2, comma R3. Now, in this instruction, R2 and R3 are the source operands and R1 is the destination operand. Am I right? Why? This is equal to R1 is equal to R2 plus R3. If I write the instruction as add R1, comma R2, comma R3, which is nothing but R1 is equal to R2 plus R3. So, what it has to do? The values which are there in the register 2 and register 3, we have to perform the addition and then we have to store the result in R1. So, that is why R1 is the destination operand and R2 and R3 are the source operand. Now, what it is saying? You have to change the name of the destination operands. So, let us take this one. R3 is having the destination operand in the instruction 1. Let us take that I am changing it as a temporary register T1. And similarly, in instruction 2, what is the destination operand? R2 is equal to 10. In the register 2, you are updating the value 2. So, I will change the name as T2. Are you able to understand? In each instruction, you will have a destination operand. That destination operand, you have to change with some names. Like, I am taking it as a T1, which is a temporary register. 1 and this is a temporary register 2. These are the registers only. T1 and T2 are the registers. Now, let us take that if I do like this one, what will happen? These are the temporary registers. Okay. So, let us take that R1 is equal to R2 plus R1. Okay. So, what I have modified? I have modified it as T1 is equal to R1 plus R2. Let us take that R1 is having value 1 and R2 is having the value 2 then temporary register will be performed 1 plus 2 you will get 3 and then in temporary register you are updating the value 10. 
So there is no conflict. Previously what happened because of the name conflict R2 and R2 you are confusing whether you are executing instruction 1 and instruction 2 like if you are getting R1 instruction 1 and then instruction 2 you are getting some value and instruction 2 and then instruction 1 you are getting different value. However, you have eliminated that problem with the help of temporary registers. At last you will make them as normal registers but however we are replacing currently with the temporary register. So this one we will call it as a register renaming because we are changing the name of the operands in every instruction. Now we will see how we will eliminate the write after write hazard using the register renaming technique. What I have said R1 is equal to R2 plus R3 then R1 is equal to R4 into R5. These are my two instruction 1 and instruction 2. Now what is the destination operands in each, in each instruction? Here the destination operand is R1. Here also the destination operand is R1. So if I replace with them with the temporary registers, in each instruction destination operand will be changed. So here I will make it as a T1. Here I will make it as a T2 which are temporary registers. So if I do it, T1 will have the R2 plus R3, then T2 will have the R4 into R5. So these two values are storing in two different locations. Previously what happened, these two instructions are keeping the value in the R1 register only. That's why the value of R1 is updating after the instruction 2. Now if you are storing these two values, instruction 1 value, result we are storing in a T1 and instruction 2 result we are storing in T2 then it is two different locations we are storing. So we will not do any updation. So that's why you will have the T2 value and T1 value separately. Are you able to understand? So this is what the register renaming concept and how it eliminates the both the hazards called write after read and write after write problems. If you still have any doubts related to this concept, feel free to ask me in the comment section. I will try to clear your doubts in less than 24 hours. Thank you for watching my video. Have a nice day.